Long introduction this morning, trying to get you geared up in a warfare mode. People get ready. Jesus is coming and he's not tolerating the enemy in your life. So you need to stop tolerating the enemy in your life as well. Today's devotion reads, I am after your heart. I don't need anything from you, says God, but I want something. I want one thing. Yes, there's one thing I am after. I am after your heart. And I will not be satisfied with a small portion, says God. I will continue to woo you with my love until you have surrounded, until you have surrendered to my loving pursuit. I want your whole heart. I want it all. We want it all. We love you with our heart, says the Spirit of God. Nothing can separate you from our love. Proverbs 23, 26, Deuteronomy 6 and 5, Romans 8, 38 and 39 are the prayer starters, are the scripture references for today. And the prayer starter, I give you my whole heart. I will hold nothing back from you because you are worthy of more than I could ever give. Show me anything in my heart that is resisting your love and I will walk, I will turn away from it. And follow you. I'm in warfare mode today. Forgive me. I feel that some of you are in need of a breakthrough. So we're going to press into that. Some of you need to make a decision this morning to stop putting up with the devil. That is the bottom line with a lot of this is we just tolerate the enemy in our lives, in our camp, in our minds, uh, in our hearts. In some instances, some of you need to cast the devil out of yourself, out of your business, out of your workplace, out of your family. You need to cast the devil out in Jesus' name. I'm in warfare mode. Uh, when you've had enough, you've had enough. And you need to decide, as we prayed last week, that enough is enough. So, Father, we praise you as king. We praise you as creator of the universe, as warrior. We create, we praise you as the captain of the host. We praise you as the one who put the devil under his feet. We praise you as the one who put the devil to open shame. We praise you as the one who triumphed over principalities and powers, making an open show of them. We praise you as the one who ejected Lucifer from heavenly places. We praise you as the one who always leads us into triumph in Christ Jesus. We praise you as the one who loves us too much to allow us to stay under the enemy's thumb. But you're delivering us today from evil as we rise up and push back the darkness that has tried to settle in over our minds, over our families, over our ministries, over our households over our workplaces, over our cities, and over our nations. God, we ask you even now to forgive us, God, for tolerating wickedness, for tolerating manipulation, for tolerating control, for tolerating Jezebel, for tolerating Absalom, for tolerating Judases, for tolerating a Python spirits, for tolerating witchcraft. God, we ask you to forgive us for tolerating treachery and tolerating betrayal and tolerating bad attitudes and tolerating these things that you've told us to rise up and push back God Lord whether these things are operating in our own souls or operating in our family members operating in our employees God you've not called us to tolerate darkness you've called us to be the light of the world you told us to let your light shine don't hide it under a bushel you told us not to speak about the works of darkness but to expose them so Lord we ask you to forgive us God for tolerating works of darkness, for tolerating principalities working on our mindsets, for tolerating principalities working to destroy our lives, for tolerating powers of witchcraft, powers of death, powers of antichrist spirits. We ask you to forgive us, God, for tolerating rulers of darkness, for tolerating spiritual wickedness, for tolerating foot soldier demons. We ask you to forgive us, God, for complaining and being bitter and murmuring and groaning and grumbling about the enemy's plans when you've given us authority over every demon power you've given us authority and power over all the power of the enemy you've given us the ability to trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means harm us God I'm asking you to, to forgive us Lord for not confronting the prince of the power of the air for not confronting the God of this world little g for not confronting the Jezebel spirits and the witchcraft operations 
in our lives, for not confronting the issues in our own hearts that would cause us not to rise up and push back that which is trying to destroy us. God, I ask you to forgive us this morning. We repent, God. Help us to change the way we think. Help us not to live under the fear of intimidation and threatenings from wicked demonic forces in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to break free from the intimidation of the wicked one. Help us to break free from the curses and the threats of the destroyer. Help us to break free of those things which try to oppress us, <laughs> even using your name. Father, we reject the yoke of the enemy. Lord, Lord your, your, your word says that your burden is easy and your yoke is light. So we reject every burden of the enemy. And we reject the yoke that the enemy has tried to put on us through threatening, intimidation, manipulation, and control. We break that yoke off our neck now in the name of Jesus. We tolerate these things because of compassion. We tolerate these things operating through people because of love. We tolerate these things operating through people coming against us because of graciousness. We tolerate these things coming through people against us because of loyalty. We tolerate these things that come against us through people because of... Ah, oh, Jesus, all of these things which are not justifiable in your kingdom. You told us not to uh, even speak of the things of darkness, but to expose them. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking you to expose every wicked agenda operating against our life. God, help us to see it in such a clear way, with such a, a distinct uh, 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 clarity and understanding, that we would run to you with repentance for ever having tolerated it. Father, I thank you that you are a God of victory. That you provided a way of escape. You provided a way of victory. You provided the path to triumph. You provided all these things. So, Father, we ask you once again to forgive us for complaining about things we could do something about. Forgive us from coming, for coming under a yoke of bondage that you've not called us to carry. Forgive us, Lord, for not being willing to confront the things that are destroying our lives because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Lord, forgive us in the name of Jesus. Help us to walk in love with people, but to deal with spirit. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask you, in the name of Jesus, to give us such keen discernment that we will be able to separate between the spirit and the person. That we will be able to love people but hate spirits that are holding them in bondage and trying to enslave us with bondage. We break free from the slavery of the Jezebel spirit. We break free from the slavery of witchcraft. We break free from that spiritual slavery of fear. We break free of that spiritual slavery of rejection. These voices talking to you, beloved, you must stop tolerating them. These voices of fear, these voices of rejection, these, 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 these agendas of control, these, this, all this manipulation. You've got to stop heeding these voices. God's voice sounds like love. God's voice is kind. Yes, sometimes he corrects us. Sometimes he disciplines us. Sometimes he even rebukes us harshly. And it seems harsh to our flesh, but it's really coming out of a place of love unto deliverance. Listen, God's discipline is unto deliverance. I'm going to say it again. God's discipline is unto deliverance. Let me say it a third time in case some of you in San Francisco aren't quite awake yet. God's discipline is unto deliverance. When God disciplines us, he is seeking to deliver us from a wrong mindset. When God delivers us, he is seeking to deliver us from a wrong thought process. When God disciplines us, he's seeking to deliver us from an addiction of our flesh, from the domination of our carnal desires. When God disciplines us, he does it unto deliverance so don't get offended with me today the issue here is we are the ones tolerating the devil we are the ones letting him into our minds into our finances into our hearts we are the ones doing it and today we say no more today we put on a jehu anointing we put on a jehu mantle and and, and run toward jezebel today we put on that davidic mantle and run towards the battle line Today, we put on the mantle, uh, we, we put on Jesus, as the Bible says, put on Christ, and we run to the cross to crucify our flesh. For some of you, your greatest enemy is not a devil. Your greatest enemy is not another person with a Jezebel spirit. For some of you, your greatest enemy is yourself because you know what to do and you keep making the same mistakes. You keep letting people abuse you. You keep letting people use you. You keep letting people push you to the brink of just insanity and won't deal with it. 
If you won't confront a thing, it's not the person who has the demon's fault anymore. It's it's your fault. If you won't confront a thing, if you want to tolerate a thing, if you want to allow a thing to continue in your life, if you want to let somebody abuse you, honey, they're wrong, but you're not free either. I break every measure of deception off our minds today in Jesus' name. Every tendency in our soul that would cause us to tolerate a demon. Soulish compassion that would cause us to tolerate a demon. Fear in our hearts that would cause us to tolerate a demon. Rejection in our soul that would cause us to tolerate a demon. Curses released in the atmosphere that would cause us to to cower under a demon power. Generational and bloodline issues that would cause us to yield to a principality. I break these things in Jesus' name. We shall not tolerate the enemy's tactics, wiles, strategies, maneuvers, mechanisms, and modes any longer. Tolerate, it means to allow the existence, occurrence, or practice of something that one does not necessarily alike or agree with without interference. I'm going to read that again. Tolerate means to allow the existence. Listen, beloved, we are allowing it. Beloved, we are allowing it. Don't tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to eat things sacrificed to idols and commit immorality. You can tolerate Jezebel. You can tolerate fear. You can tolerate rejection. You can tolerate lack. Oh my God, did I just say that? You can tolerate lack. You can tolerate poverty. You can tolerate debt. Oh, shorakatam briste. Allow the existence, occurrence, or practice of something that one does not necessarily like or agree with without interference. It means you just roll over and let it happen. Oh yeah, you might complain about it. Mm. You might grumble about it. You might express your displeasure. But you don't do anything to stop it, beloved. It's time to rise up and get the enemy out of your camp. I'm not trying to be mean with you. I'm trying to stir you up so that you can understand. Beloved, you don't have to put up with this junk. You don't have to put up with it. You're not called to be a doormat. You're not called to be uh, a paycheck. You're not called to be tormented and threatened and intimidated. You're not called to be served ultimatums. If you do this, I'll do that. If you don't do this, I'll do that. You're not called to, to come up under that spirit of bondage. Paul said to the Galatians, Who has bewitched you that you would come up again under the yoke of bondage? Christ set you free once and for all. Why would you submit your heart, submit your soul to a person operating in a spirit? Why would you submit your heart, submit your soul to the voice of a demon power trying to keep you in the bondage that Christ delivered you from? I want you to get mad at the devil today. I don't want you to get mad at people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness. I'm not trying to get you mad at your husband, your wife, your sister, your boss. That's not the point. If you go there, you've gotten into the flesh. I'm I'm asking you, I'm charging you, I'm provoking you to get mad at the enemy, the real enemy, the devil, the spirit that is attacking you. Yes, it may be attacking you through a person. It may be attacking you through a thought. It may be attacking you because you need deliverance. It's up in your soul somewhere. The devil is your enemy. But he does work through people many times. And sometimes he works through you. Sometimes he works through me. I'm saying none of us are immune to being used of the enemy to hurt another person. So that's why we came in repenting. Tolerate. To accept or endure someone or something unpleasant or disliked with forbearance. When you tolerate something, you're accepting something. You're forgiving it and 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 and accepting it and enduring it. Something that God has not called you to endure. Listen, you do have to forgive people. But we don't forgive devils. The devils, listen, the devils, beloved, the devils, have, they, they don't get forgiveness. At the end of the day, the universalists are wrong. Those who believe that Satan somehow is going to repent and God's going to let him into heaven last minute, yes, there are people who believe that. They believe that Satan's going to repent at the last minute 
and he's going to get to go to heaven. Devils get no forgiveness. They have an eternal torment ahead of them. They'll be in the lake of fire and in hell forever. Devil, you don't forgive devils. You forgive people. Stop forgiving devils. Stop accepting or enduring someone or something unpleasant or disliked with forbearance. Father, help us to stop tolerating demons. Jesus never tolerated a demon. Did you know that? He confronted those pharisaical religious goofs over and over again. He confronted them and he put them in his place. When Peter rose up and began to speak the mind of, this, of the devil, Jesus turned to him and said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for you have your thoughts on the things of the earth and not on the things of God. Peter, he called Peter Satan. He turned to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't talking to the devil. He was talking to the devil, talking to Peter. He was, he was associating Peter with the enemy's thoughts and plans. Peter rebuked Jesus. He rebuked Jesus. Can you imagine rebuking Jesus? And Jesus rebuked him back. Jesus did not tolerate demon powers. He allowed himself to be crucified, not to tolerate a demon power but to submit to the will of the Father. Don't get it mixed up. There's a whole different situation there. Jesus didn't tolerate Judas. He understood from the beginning, knowing the night he stayed up all night to pray and picked the twelve apostles, he already knew that moment that Judas was going to betray him. It wasn't a toleration. It was walking out the will and the plan of the Lord. It's a different situation. And then now I hear somebody saying, well, how do I know I'm not supposed to tolerate my Jezebel husband? Well, because you're not. The Bible says don't tolerate Jezebel specifically. To understand the difference between Jesus walking the earth, fully God, fully man, submitting to God's master plan. And you tolerating a demon of fear that's trying to destroy your life. A demon of lack that's trying to tear things apart. A spirit of strife that's destroying your family. Father, help us today to discern. Help us today to discern. Help us today to discern, God, in Jesus' name. To, to stop putting things in there. I just saw a picture of just a big old lump under a rug. There's some people on this broadcast. You keep pushing these things under the rug. It's almost embarrassing for you to admit that you've been tolerating a, an Ahab or a Jezebel or an Absalom or whatever it is. It's like almost embarrassing for you to admit it. So you just keep shoving it under the rug, hoping it'll go away. But now you're tripping over it. You can't even walk. You can't even walk straight without tripping over this this issue father help us today in Jesus name help us today in Jesus name help us today in Jesus name father give us discernment the Lord showed me this morning you know George Washington was a man of God president George Washington the great general and the first president of the United States one of his most trusted trusted men one he trusted <laughs> just as much as anybody, was Benedict Arnold. He was also a general. And Benedict Arnold betrayed him and entered into a great treachery. Sometimes people that are very close to you can be moving in treachery. They can be moving in wrong spirits. And it's hard to believe and you don't want to see it. But if you examine the fruit of the relationship, if you examine the fruit of the conversations, if you examine the fruit of your thoughts you'll see some of these things and when I say don't tolerate it it doesn't mean to crucify somebody when I say don't tolerate it it doesn't mean to shun them like they're a, you know like they're a demon themselves I'm saying you gotta you gotta confront these things sometimes listen sometimes you do have to disconnect and, and stop being aligned and working with certain people if they just don't want to repent. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, give us great wisdom. I take authority now over, and you, can need to, you need to do this with me because I can't, I can't, I can't, I can only, my authority over you only extends to the extent of your alignment with me and your submission to the prayer. But I stand with your people, God, in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, to give us the courage. Not to go on a witch hunt, not to go around hurting people and making accusations, but the courage to, to, to resist the devil. Resist the devil. The Bible says in James chapter 4, I believe it's James chapter 4, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Father, we repent again for the, for the ways that we've not been resisting the devil. The voices of fear, the voices of doubt, the voices of unbelief, the voices of rejection, the voices of addiction. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for 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 not resisting the devil, for not submitting ourselves to you. When we're not when when we're not resisting the devil, we're not submitted to you. Because your word tells us to resist the devil. So when we fail to resist the devil, we are we have failed to submit to you. And this is why the enemy gets such an inroads in our mind, in our life, in our finances, in our family, in our health. I'm telling you, there's somebody, listen to me, you've been sick for well over a year. And it's because you've been tolerating a certain spirit and you don't see it. Father, we thank you that you are so good, that you're always there ready to help. That when we decide enough is enough, when we decide to stop tolerating the enemy, you are there with strength and strategies and grace and power and authority to help us to walk into a new level of freedom. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for the courage to confront that which is out of order. I ask you for courage, God, to rise up and push back against the darkness that has tried to oppress and that has oppressed our soul. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, for the wisdom to navigate difficult situations with family and friends and employees, that we might not crucify people or bring them harm, but that we might, like a very skilled surgeon, and like your word itself does, Lord, your word divides between soul and spirit. So, Father, help us as we navigate these issues, when we see problems, to use wisdom To walk in love, but to to divide between a person and a principality. A personality and a principality. and And to love people, but to hate devils. And Father, help us, because most of this, for most of you, is just coming against your mind. Help us to use your word to divide between soul and spirit. Between what's going on in our soul. What your spirit is saying. What demon spirits are saying. Help us, Lord, to catch these thoughts, these tormenting thoughts in Jesus' name. And I break every, every curse of intimidation. See, this is what both Goliath and Jezebel did. Goliath was making threats to all of Israel. It was a spirit of intimidation. Making threats. Cursing. The Bible said, listen, the Bible says Goliath cursed David by his gods. And he threatened him and intimidated him. Except David could not be intimidated. The same thing happened to Elijah. Jezebel sent a messenger of intimidation. Cursing him. And he ran. And wished he was dead. But Jehu could not be intimidated. David could not be intimidated. So, Father, help us today to to grab a hold of your truth. Because your truth, your son, he is the truth. And he's not easily intimidated. Jesus was not intimidated by the Pharisees. Jesus was not intimidated by the Sadducees. Jesus was not intimidated by the false prophets and by the Judases. Jesus was not intimidated. Jesus walked in love perfectly, but he did not tolerate demons. So, Father, we thank you for the example that Christ set forth for us. 
<coughs> we thank you, Lord, for the example <coughs> that Jesus set forth for us. Bold as a lion, harmless as a dove, wise as a serpent, easy to be entreated, full of wisdom and grace and truth. Father, help us to navigate these issues with people with that same spirit, the spirit of Christ. And help us, Lord, to persecute the demons that have been persecuting our minds and our bodies. To release the word of God back, which just drives them crazy. Father, help us to grab hold of your truth, to stop tolerating the devil, my God. Help us just to stop tolerating the devil. Stop tolerating the enemy in the camp. For some of you, that camp is between your ears. Some of you, that camp is just between your ears. Some of you, that camp is your household. Doesn't mean you kick your husband out the door. It means you open your mouth and you have a talk. It means that you pray. You're not called to be a doormat. It never fails when I say something like this. Somebody will go back to their husband and mouth off. And make accusations and their husband will call me and curse me up one side and down the other. So please don't do that. Go to your pastor and get some advice. Get counseling. If it's a marriage situation, don't, don't go railing on your spouse, please. That is not at all what I'm suggesting. You pray for your spouse. You talk with them with love and compassion. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us insight, understanding, wisdom, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God is good. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I have a, a few quick announcements. But I want to give you an opportunity to sow today, as I always do, just briefly. For some of you, this is a life-changing word, really. For some of you, this is, this is what you needed. You needed a little Holy Ghost kick in the pants to realize that you're not, you're not called to live under this oppression. If you're tired all the time, if you're in turmoil all the time because of the way that other people are treating you or because of the thoughts that you're hearing in your mind, I'm telling you, that's not God's plan for you. So you need to go listen to this broadcast again and really make sure you understood it. Don't take anything I said out of context. The spirit we operate in is always love. But sometimes love is not Oh, you poor baby, I know you're hurting, that's why you treat me this way. No, sometimes love is, there's an issue here and we need to deal with it so that you can be free because love doesn't leave people in bondage. Love doesn't leave people in bondage. You're a pastor and you've got a Jezebel in your church. You don't just need to kick them out the door You need to try to restore them. You need to try to restore them. Restoration is always the key. If your marriage is on the rocks, you don't just need to give it up. You need to try to, you need to seek reconciliation. You need to get counseling. You need to get some of these issues dealt with. God's heart is always for 
deliverance even if there cannot be reconciliation. And you might be the only one with enough kindness and love in your heart to speak out about a close friend of yours or a close family member who you see that they're just as miserable as the people around them who they're making miserable. Believe me, people that are operating in Absalom spirits and Judas spirits and Jezebel spirits and Ahab spirit, you know, people that are operating in these spirits are not happy people. Oftentimes, especially with the realm of Jezebel, oftentimes they're, they, they just stay sick. There's two sides of the Jezebel issue where people stay sick. The one being attacked by Jezebel spirit many times will stay sick, but the one with the Jezebel spirit oftentimes will just stay sick. How do you know that? Well, Jesus said, I will cast her on a sick bed, her and her children. Oftentimes people who are operating under the influence of the spirit, they just stay sick. They just stay sick. And some people stay sick for other reasons, so don't assume it's always a Jezebel. Listen, if you want to sew today, we are going to the Philippines. We don't yet have the entire cost of the flights paid for. However, these flights are not nearly as expensive as what Nigeria or Singapore, Taiwan, and Asia were comparatively. This is our last scheduled international trip for this year. I don't anticipate any more international trips this year. It's possible something might pop up. But there's already several plans for next year. We've got Scotland, London at least twice, Taiwan again. Uh, we'll go through Perth, Australia, Singapore most likely. And uh, from there I'm not sure where. But if you want to sow into the missions, you know God's sending me into the nations of the earth to raise up prophets uh, to come against the spirit of Jezebel and to, <laughs> how ironic is that? My God. There's just a lot of it out there right now. And teaching people how to war and fight, two of the primary mandates on my life. So if you want to sow into that, jenniferleclair.org slash missions, jenniferleclair.org slash missions. JenniferLeClaire.org slash missions. You can also just give a regular, sow a regular seed on the regular site, JenniferLeClaire.give. I'm sorry, JenniferLeClaire.org slash give. JenniferLeClaire.org slash give. You can become a partner there. The new partner resource is coming out in just a few days. So if you sign up now, you'll get this month's partner resource and next month's partner resource. Hallelujah. You can also use PayPal, PayPal.me slash JenniferLeClaire, PayPal.me slash JenniferLeClaire. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Cash app, dollar sign, Jennifer LeClaire. Cash app, dollar sign, Jennifer LeClaire. Text to give, 754-701-2161. Text the word pray, 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. You can also use the P.O. Box if you're sending a check or a money order. You can use the P.O. Box if you're sending a book or a CD or a gift card, or a written letter, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Amen. Father, I thank you for all those who are giving. I ask you to multiply this back to them, not just in finances, but in discernment, God, in grace, in understanding, in wisdom, that they might understand completely the opposition they face and the strategy for overcoming it without hurting anybody and without causing further delay in their own breakthrough. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for all of my Awakening Blaze leaders, my Ignite Network members, all those who are aligned with me, God. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to bless them. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, School of the Prophetic is going to start on Saturday. If you've not signed up, do so. Remember, Ignite Network members get a 15% discount. So if you're not a member of Ignite, sign up, ask for the code, and then sign up for the School of the Prophets. Amen. It's just that easy. Ask for the code first. There are no retro codes. 
ask for the code first then sign up amen amen it's a school of the spirit dot tv school of the spirit dot tv it is our very first event in the new building hallelujah if you are in south florida listen or if you can get to south florida if you are in south florida you have friends in south florida let them know our very first sunday service is on sunday and i'm teaching on spiritual principles of breakthrough it's a powerful word that will inspire and equip you to see breakthrough in your life go well it's it's in davy i can't i don't know the address yet should be on awakeninghouseofprayer.com or go to jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com and and just register let us know that you're coming In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, Amen. I'm looking here, our supernatural debt cancellation service is on Saturday night. Supernatural debt cancellation service on Saturday night. You might not be able to watch that live. If you're in South Florida, come to South Florida. If you're in South Florida, come to South Florida. Come for the School of Prophetic. Come for the Supernatural Debt Cancellation. Come for the launch of the of the Sunday service in our new building. It's going to be a very special weekend. If you're not in South Florida, listen, if you're not in South Florida and you want to be part of the School of the Prophets, you can. School of the Prophetic I'm sorry, School of the Spirit TV. The debt cancellation service you can watch online at ahop.tv, ahop.tv. And if you want to join our online campus for Awakening House of Prayer, we'd be part of our online campus. We do have a also a special private exclusive uh, Facebook page. a special group where you're going to get uh more community in there so we can all talk to each other more but that's only for members of the online campus so if you want to be part of the online campus it's free just go sign up ahop.online 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 hallelujah ahop dot online and then uh, da, 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 the mint the uh, tier one prayer broadcast is today it's going to be talking about the power of a decree and you'll be able to tap into that there if you're a student a couple one student particular said I'm not getting email updates all of the email updates on our end show delivered so oftentimes what happens is your server will block that and you have to put us on a white list Sometimes we're just in spam, but sometimes it, the server just blocks it all together because it, for whatever reason, thinks it's spam. And so, but our systems always show bounce backs or non-deliverable addresses, and uh, and we don't we don't see any of that with this. So uh, we always send out the emails. If you're not getting them, the right thing to do is to sure, of course, let us know so we can check to make sure you are getting. We you know that you didn't enter. Some people in the past they just enter the wrong email address. They put the wrong, a wrong letter somewhere, and so they're they're not getting them. And so on our end it shows delivered but on their end they had typed in the wrong email address when they registered therefore it's going to somebody else <laughs> or it's going out into a uh, cyberspace hallelujah so go do that get ready for that one look trying to look today is the 5779 broadcast and uh, tomorrow is the broadcast about Snoop Dogg and his gospel deception uh, you should see all the gospel artists that are involved in this some of your favorite gospel artists may be involved in this and you don't you don't know it and you're inadvertently listening to uh perverse rappers who are guising uh, disguising themselves as uh as 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 Christian artists and they're not. So you want to get on go to jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com sign up for what blesses you. Make sure you're not signing up for an in-person event that is only that make sure you're not signing up to come to an in-person event if you're not coming to an in-person event. It's all always marked. Amen. So check it out. Be sure to read what you're getting. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. All right, I got to go. I'm sure that's all of my announcements. I may be forgetting something. It is what it is in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I'm so glad Natalie Garcia that this spoke to you. You participate in the supernatural debt cancellation service Debbie by following the directions when you sign up. All right.
let's not pull me into admin Facebook. Email support, and you'll get an answer to any question you have. All right, I am not your answer woman. I don't have a clue. Email support, that's the right channel. Use the right channel, you'll get the right answers, guaranteed. Bless you, have a great day.